heat beautifully. So I just basically wrapped it real well. And of course, I just tore a little piece, which isn't good because now it means that um, <laughs> stuff will get in there. So let me get a little piece of aluminum foil to. This is not in the script. Not in the script, that's right. Okay, so I'm just putting a little extra aluminum foil there. Okay, the next step is to use some parchment paper. You can buy half sheets of parchment paper on Amazon. It's terrific to have, and you don't have to cut it. And I just lay that on top, because that's where the moth is going to go, on top of the parchment paper, which is on top of the aluminum foil, which is on top of the half sheets. <laughs> okay. So the next thing is you're going to take out three or four pieces of fresh matzah. I've got the Straits matzah. I just got it last week at Publix. And the better job you do of cutting it, the better, the easier it's going to be to put the caramel on on top. So I've just got a regular cookie, regular um, matzo boards, and I'm just laying it on top of the cookie sheet. Got to turn it some more. <laughs> like that. There you go. Can y'all, hopefully y'all can see that. And I'm going to fill in all the holes, all the space with slices of matzah. So I'm going to try to customize the cut so it's as close to the edge as possible. I could just crack off little pieces, but when you do that, it's harder to put the caramel sauce on it. So I just cut a piece a little bit closer like this. Can y'all see it? Jeez, no Hopefully, answer. Margaret, can y'all see? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm just simply trying to cut the piece as close to the edge as I can. So I cover it all because that's where the caramel sauce is going to go. And I'm going to try to do one more hall sheet and see if I can get some big pieces. When you can't get big pieces, you can just use small pieces. Just try to get them as close to the edge so you're covering as much of the cookie sheet as you can. It's not a perfect science. I haven't mastered it perfectly and I only make this once or twice a year. So um, it's, it's not perfect, but I'm trying. Okay, so there's one more piece there. And I'm gonna try one more piece here. And that's about it. Again, it's not gonna be perfect. But the fewer little bitty pieces you have, come on, uh, uh, Diana, hold on a second. Uh, we lost you. Hold on. Okay. Um, let me see if I can get that. So y'all should be able to see most of it is covered, but use as many big pieces as you can. That's the first step. You get the cookie sheets taken care of, and then you get your matzah on top of it. The next part is making the caramel sauce. So give me that good one, please. So I'm putting two sticks of butter in. You can, I've got unsalted butter that I'm using, but you also can use Fleischmann's uh, margarine, which would give you a parb dish. I prefer the butter. Anytime I can use butter over margarine, I do. And I'm putting the two sticks. I have softened this. I've left it out for a couple of hours because it melts faster and it means the sauce gets cooked faster. If you put it in cold straight from the refrigerator, it will take longer to bring to a boil, which is what my next motive is here. Motivation. Um, okay, I want, I want you to take a look now. I'm gonna measure the one cup of firmly packed light sugar. When it says firmly packed, and you'll see this in most dishes with light brown sugar, it says firmly packed. There's a huge difference in just putting sugar in, heaping it up there, and packing it tight. You will get a big difference in how much you're putting in. So I like scooping it out of some big bowl and packing it against the side so that when I full pack cup, that's well, it's got the clay, the clay piece in it. Forget that. Okay, that helps keep it from sticking. Um, so full packed brown sugar cup, one cup. So I'm gonna now pour that in the pot with the melted butter, melting butter, and I'm gonna turn it on medium. And at this point, I'm gonna start stirring and I'm going to stay with it the entire time. With caramel, you do not wanna leave 
it, it burns very easily. So I'm just gonna stand here. I have found this takes approximately five minutes to bring to a boil, and then you time it for three more minutes. So it's gonna take approximately eight minutes, something around there, to take care of your caramel sauce. So what's gonna happen now while well, I stir, there's no reason for you to sit here and watch me stir for eight minutes, right? So um, I'm gonna switch over to Margaret now, who's gonna talk a little bit about what she's gonna be doing. Margaret, it's yours. Thank you, Dan. I know we're all excited to come back in a few minutes and see how that caramel is progressing. Um, so I wanna take this chance just first to thank Natalie for lending me her recipe today. I'd actually never made a carrot kugel um, before the last couple of weeks. Now I've actually made quite a few carrot kugels and trying to get ready for today's session and I found it to be really tasty. Um, I was excited though, because kugels generally are one of my favorite, um, you know, family Jewish food categories. Um, you know, Barbara said at the beginning that my grandma is one of my cooking inspirations and she makes a mean noodle kugel, but one that's not great for Passover. So I was really excited for this recipe. Um, so I wanna give you all a chance, anybody who's cooking along to go ahead and get a few ingredients ready. Um, I'm flying solo today, so I did a few things ahead of time so as not to be carrying around my laptop. So you can see that I've got some things prepared here. I've got my grated carrots. Um, you could do this by hand. Um, I peeled them also um, to get rid of that sort of like outer tougher layer. Um, I did mine in the food processor, which was really nice and easy. So if you have a food processor with a grater attachment, this would be a good time to use it. Um, I've also gone ahead and sauteed my onions. I will tilt this a little so you all can see what that's looking like. You'll see that I've got the onions and then also um, the oil that the onions were sauteed in, um, in this bowl here. So what you'll wanna do is go ahead and chop your onions and maybe even use, um, if you've got a little downtime, if you're trying to juggle the matzo crack and the onion sauteing, you definitely could get into a situation where you've got a lot of uh, irons on the fire, but you could do both at once. So um, when we come back together, I'm going to really be in the process of assembling. So if you are cooking along, go ahead and chop and grate. Um, you could even measure out some things ahead of time. This is how I like to cook. Um, you know, I like to have everything in little bowls sort of ready to go. So I've got my brown sugar, which I did measure out as Jan suggested, you know, by, by packing it in. Um, I've got my golden raisins here all measured out. I've got some canned pineapple in its own juice. Make sure, you know, you, you get some of that nice juice in there. And then I've got my two eggs, um, which I will go ahead and Probably, I'll just do this now actually. I'll go ahead and crack and beat them so that they're ready to combine into my dish. So I'm just gonna crack them into this measuring cup just because I've used all my bowls. There's no rhyme or reason to having the measuring cup. Um, I just already measured everything out in all my bowls so that it will be easier to mix in that way. And that way, when we come back together, we'll have everything all ready to go to finish our kugel. So um, if anyone's cooking along, go ahead and do that. And Jan, are you ready for me to switch it back to you so we can see where your caramel is? It's just about ready to start boiling. So if you have anything else to say, because you got another minute or so. No, well, I actually got a question coming in. So this is a, a great question. Karen says, do we drain any of the pineapple juice off? Karen, I did drain the pineapple in my sink beforehand. So I just threw it in a colander in the sink and let some of that juice come off. Natalie, if I did that incorrectly, feel free to jump in and, and correct me on it. My kugel came out pretty, my last two kugels have come out pretty, pretty good doing it that method, but it's possible I read the directions wrong. And Arlene asks, do you only use organic eggs? Arlene, I, um, I am very brand loyal to a specific egg. It has more to do for me with the eggs being super delicious and local than organic. Although I think that, you know, buying organic is great. So I only buy the Smithfield Heritage eggs, um, which sounds fancier than it is. I actually buy them at the Piggly Wiggly and they're about $1 more than your sort of like regular cheap eggs. So I've, I've actually found them to be a sort of like nice middle ground between super expensive eggs that you would buy at Whole Foods or the farmer's market 
and you know cheaper eggs, which might not taste as good, um, they're really worth it. And they're right from Coleman. So um, it's also nice to be able to support a local farmer. Okay. Ready great. now. Awesome. I'm going to turn it back over to Jan and oh. grate those carrots and saute your onions in the meantime. OK, guys, so Can it is see? now boiling. Oh, okay. And it's, um, it's, I mean, I'm talking about fast boil where it's bubbling up. Hold on, let's see. OK, you should be able to see it now. You want it boiling, I mean, a really hard boil for three minutes. So at the point that it started boiling, I set the timer for three minutes and I stir, stir, stir. You don't wanna move away from this stuff because it will burn. So three minutes boiling like this. As soon as it's ready, I'm gonna carry it over to the island. Ron will follow me the best he can. He's doing great. <laughs> and uh, back up a little bit. And um, I will be pouring this over I put on the cookie sheets and you're going to see why it becomes so important to try to keep your pieces of matzo as large as possible because it's hard to spread the caramel on these little bitty pieces they start moving on you so um, we're going to pour it on there and then we're going to put it in the oven and it goes in for approximately 15 minutes at 350 and you have to know your ovens to know whether it's a hot oven or a cooler oven as far as whether you need to keep a watch on it or whatever. Ron, I need you to please take that, just set that down, take that out of the oven. I've got a second batch that just was baking because I want to be able to show you what happens after the 15 minutes when it comes out. So the timing isn't perfect. It's as close as I could get. Just put it on top of the rack, on top of the island. And this should be ready shortly. My Alexa should tell me it's done. So what's going to happen is I'm going to pour this all over the matzah on the cookie sheets and I'm going to put it in the oven for 15 minutes and then I'll show you what happens when it comes out of the oven now that I've just got that batch done. Uh, Ron, can you grab the bowl of the finished product, please? For those of you who didn't see earlier, uh, I've got a bowl full of some of the already cooked matzah. Some of you there may not have ever had any before. Okay, and this is tough. <laughs> oh, you didn't if it falls, I'll eat it. <laughs> Jan, we have a question coming in. Does it matter if you use light brown or dark brown sugar in these recipes? Yes, it does matter. Don't ever use dark brown sugar when it calls for light brown. There's a very big difference uh, in the way it tastes and the way it cooks, etc. cetera. Alexa, turn the time off. Yeah, I'll add to that. It's probably more important for like a baking recipe. Like Jan says, it really can cause things to cook in a different way. For the kugel, I think it's probably a little bit more versatile. I use light, but you're not dealing with sort of the same level of uh, alchemy that baking can require. Um, so you might have a little more flexibility. You're saying what I'm doing right now, hopefully, I'm now pouring all of the caramel all over this matzah. And as soon as I get as much out of it, stuff it is so hot that if it fills on your skin it will burn get some ice on it really quickly i've done that a few times too um okay so that's it. so now i'm going to take just a regular rubber rubber spatula I'm showing the whole just, house you know. <laughs> and just start spreading it all over the matzo the best i can yeah, there you go um just move it around as best you can the oven will help you when you put it in there it'll also spread it some too but i'm trying to do my best to spread it over all the pieces somewhat evenly. There we go. There's a full and, picture of a wonderful aroma. Yeah, the, the smell of the caramel is, is divine. Wish y'all could smell that. But you'll see when I get to these smaller pieces, it's a lot harder to get the caramel over it because they move around. So the better you get at cutting your matzo to fit, the better off you're gonna be. But I'm pushing it around the best I can. I missed some over here. So you can pick up some of the caramel sauce and move it around as you need to. It's quite flexible. And this is all this step calls for. Just get the caramel on the best you can and get it in the oven. And again, about 15 minutes, know your oven, whether you need to watch it or not. I'm gonna put it in the oven now and set the timer for 15 minutes. Okay, so now we've got the fresh batch 
just came out. What we're going to do here is I've got a cup of three quarter, uh, three quarter, uh, three quarter cup of chocolate chips. And you can use a minis, you can use whatever kind you like. This is just a standard Nestle's and I'm just going to pour it all over the muffin. I can't now this cooled down a little bit. They may not melt as good as they would have if I just got it over there right when it came out of the oven. But I just poured it over. Now at this point, if you like nuts, you could have roasted some walnuts, you could have roasted some pecans, chopped them up really finely. You could put them on there as well. You can do a lot of different things with mixes of what you want on top of the um, matzah. I just happen to like the chocolate and the caramel. That's enough for me. And in fact, sometimes I don't even like this much chocolate. I like more of the caramel. So you can see they're starting to melt. But once they do, you leave it on usually for about five minutes, let them melt from the heat of the caramel. And once they start melting, you just literally take your spatula and move it all around, smooth it all over the matzah. And you're done, just let it sit out here for a little while, cool down. I put it in the freezer. You can wait till it cools down enough so that you can make small pieces. You just crack it off to any sizes you want. I do a variety of sizes when I'm breaking it apart because some people like more than others. So I have small pieces, large pieces, and I'll show you that in just a second. But right now, all I'm doing is just spreading this melted chocolate all over. And you're done. I mean, whether you put nuts on it, whatever you want to put over here, once you get this done, you finished it. I mean, there's four steps and the whole thing takes less than 30 minutes. It's that easy, that fast, and it's amazing how good this is. It does not taste like matzah at all. You won't know you're eating matzah, so you can serve it any time of the year, really. Freezes beautifully, so when I get it all cooled off and broken into pieces, I put it in the freezer and in a bag, in a freezer bag, and I can keep it there for three to six months. We don't usually let it last that long. I give it away as gifts and things, but family stuff. But it is, uh, it's all melted now. It's, uh, let's see if we can get a better shot of it. Hopefully y'all can see that. Yeah. And it's done. So let me show you what the different pieces, what I've done, because you can make them any size as you want. You can break them off, make them as little, big as you want. Even after you've frozen it, you could still make it smaller if you want to do smaller pieces. Don't put that in front Ron's going to eat it now. He likes it. He likes the stuff. This is part of his, his favorite part of uh, being my assistant. Again, breaks real easily. This has been frozen now for about two weeks. I served some yesterday for a lunch. I served it along with the chocolate chip cookies and um, some mandel bread. And this was gone faster than the other two, which take me a whole lot longer to make. So it's a wonderful dessert. I'm done with it. We can go back to Margaret who can finish. And then if y'all have any questions for me at that point, I'm happy to answer. Great, thank you so much, Dan. I already see some questions and comments coming in. So I'll finish off the Google and then we'll get to a QA. and a Okay. So for anybody who's cooking along, hopefully you have your uh, carrots grated and your onions sauteed at this point. Um, and really, this is now just a process of coming together and measuring things out. And then I'll also show you the final product. I also should note that um, this recipe makes a 9 by 13 pan. So you'll notice that I'm actually making a half recipe right now um, because I made a half recipe earlier today also. And uh, it, there would have been a lot of kugel for the two people that live in my house. So um, don't get thrown off by the size pan I'm using. So on that note, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and grease my pan. So I have some cooking spray. I have um, an eight by eight pan here because I'm having the recipe. I'm just going to go ahead and spray it down. Um, I've also preheated my oven at this point to 350 degrees. And now I am going to take my carrots and I'm going to add those first. Let me tilt this down. You can see all my bowls here. So I'm just going to take my carrots and I'm going to add them to this large mixing bowl. Um, I usually err on the side when I'm reading a recipe of adding things in the order that they're listed on the recipe. So going along with, um, with the recipe that you have in front of you, I'm going to add my matzo meal next. Um, I ordered this off the internet because I couldn't find it anywhere in Birmingham. Maybe someone has good tips on where to find matzo meal in Birmingham. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm doing one cup since I'm having the recipe, but if you're doing the full recipe, this would be two cups. And I'm just going to measure that out. I'm going to pour that in. And I have exactly a cup left, which is amazing. I'm going to sprinkle it over my carrots in this bowl. And I'm just going to sort of stir around at each step to get everything incorporated. I think when you're making something that has a lot of layers, it's always a good idea to sort of combine as you go so you don't get to the end and have sort of like a huge mass of things to stir together. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. And let's see, next is gonna be my onion. So I've got my onion nice and sauteed. And then I also have um, some of that nice oil left behind that I sauteed it in to give it a little bit of moisture. So I'm gonna pour that in and this will really help the carrot and matzo meal start to come together here. You can feel it sort of starting to bind a little bit. Got that nice and stirred in. And next I'm gonna do the golden raisins. I love golden raisins, so I was really glad to see these in the carrot kugel recipe. Um, I have to say, I just love the sort of sweet, savory nature of kugel. It's one of my favorite things. Put those aside and get those nice and stirred in. Let's see. And next is going to be my cinnamon and salt. So I'll add those and then stir them in at the same time. And you want to make sure you get that, you know, nice and sort of distributed. So we've got a teaspoon. So I like to sort of add sprinkling over the top you know, whenever I add spices or salt or anything. So you try to get it really nice and mixed in. And then cinnamon, you're gonna add a whole tablespoon or a half tablespoon if you're doing a half recipe. And I tend to think with something like cinnamon, you know, it doesn't have to be super exact. I'm admittedly kind of a, a spice non-measurer when I cook, which there are probably different schools of thoughts on. I get that nice and mixed in. Also, I have to say, Jan said her house smelled amazing as she was making that caramel. My house has smelled amazing for days from the series of, of uh, carrot kugels I've been making. So I think I have like a week of carrot kugel scent like permanently here and it's amazing. So I would highly recommend making even for just that aroma. I'm sure my neighbors are wondering what I'm doing in here. Let's see, and now I've got my eggs. So again, um, probably a good, a good idea to go ahead and beat them before you add them so it'll be harder to get them nice and incorporated if you try to, if you just crack them directly into the bowl. So let me get that in there. I also, one other thing about this recipe because there is a sort of sauteing component um, and you know, this. This might not be possible for those who are cooking along right now, but I do, if we, if I had more time, I'd probably want to sort of let my onions cool down a little in the same way that I always let my eggs come to room temperature um, before I add them to anything and try to get things to sort of start on an even temperature ground. Again, probably not as important as something like Google, but I think that's probably the baker in me that has that tendency. And now I've got my pineapple, which I'm gonna stir in. It's starting to make that really nice, like stirred together sound. And then my last step is going to be to stir in my brown sugar here. And I am also using light brown sugar. It was an interesting question that came earlier. I tend to always buy light brown sugar, and I don't really know why. I'd be curious, maybe if people have strong opinions one way or the other, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, you know, I know, like like Jan said, that when you're following a sort of baking recipe, especially you want to be careful to use what it specifies, but I don't know why I air towards like- Margaret, Margaret, the only recipe I'm aware of that uses dark brown that I can think of right off is pecan pie. There may be a few other pies that use dark and you definitely want to use dark on those. But other than that, every other cookie cake I make calls for light brown. That's probably why I, why I gear towards it then. 
Okay, well, I've got my Google mix all nice and together. I'll try to tilt it so you can sort of see it's nice and incorporated there. And it's really, I, you know, the first time I made it last week, it's such a perfect texture when it's coming together. You know, it still feels nice and moist, but it really does bind together with that egg um, and the matzo meal. I mean, it just comes together wonderfully. And I'll show you in a second how well it's sliced too after it cooled. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop that in. So here. And I'm just gonna spread it and get it nice and evenly distributed in the pan. And I am now gonna stick it in my oven and I'm gonna bring back the finished product. So hold tight for one second. And you can see here, today is batch number one. So we've got the finished product in this pan here with one slice missing. <laughs> And here is that slice, which I have resisted eating all morning, but you can see how nicely it cut. I was really impressed at how well it stayed together and it just, it developed this really nice crispy edge to which in the little bites that I've been sneaking off have been really um, delicious. So that is the carrot kugel and thank you again, Natalie, for sharing that recipe with me. Um, I see that we already have some questions coming in. Before we get to them though, I'm actually going to turn it over to Arlene and Sue, who I think have a few words that they want to say um, from Sisterhood, and then we'll take the Q&A. All right, thanks, Margaret. So yeah, we'd like, this has been really fabulous. And um, we want to thank, first of all, everybody that attended, and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, to Barbara for or organizing the whole program. And for our fabulous cooks, Margaret and Jan, y'all have done a fabulous job, very professional. <laughs> so um, thank you. This has really been, been fun. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Arlene because we've got some other things coming up in the future that we want to um, tell everybody about. Thank you. Um, I, I too wanna echo my sentiments. Thanks, y'all did a great job and it was super professional. And I've sat in under, uh, and other food demonstrations and y'all definitely professional. So thank you so much. Um, wanted to let you know that we are bringing the gift shop to you since our gift shop is closed. We are undertaking a Shabbat candle sale. We have the regular Shabbat candles. We have the short Nareem candles and we also some very pretty uh, decorative Shabbat candles. We have your side candles and we have Havdalah candles. And I hope everyone has gotten the link. And if you haven't already placed an order, please do. And we will be delivering the candles to all those that do place an order. So thank you in advance for supporting the gift shop. Secondly, on April the 11th, which is a Sunday, we are traveling to Israel. And Rebecca Rothman has been our travel agent. And she has made arrangements with Aaron Gertz, who lives in Israel. And he is going to be taking us on a tour of the eclectic part of Tel Aviv. And it's known as the Florentine District. And it's about graffiti on the walls, the artwork that is shown. And we've had a preview, Sue and I have had a preview and he is very entertaining, very knowledgeable. And it'll be a fun, a fun day. That will be on April the 11th at 10. And then I hope Shira's still on this call on May the 9th, Torah Fund is having an event and Julia Goldberg, who are Matt and Shira's daughter, she will be speaking. She is a first year student at the Jewish Theological Seminary and she's doing a joint program and she will be sharing uh, what her first year has been like. So you will be getting information about it, but thank you so much and look forward to seeing everybody on Zoom and keep your fingers crossed that eventually we will be able to meet in person, hopefully by the fall. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm actually gonna spotlight both Jan and myself for the Q and A, okay. And we've already had quite a few questions come in. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> and we've got the other matzo coming out. That's great. Um, let's go through some of these questions that are in the chat. One that I would love to hear the answer to also came to Jan asking if you have other Passover recipes, Passover dessert recipes that you would suggest since you're such a wonderful baker. Well, thank you so much for the question. Um, I have two that I think are absolutely terrific that can be used throughout the year. One is a pecan crescent. It's like a little butter cookie. It uses a, a matzo cake meal, but you will never know you're not eating anything that is a regular fabulous dessert just filled with pecans. And I have those already in the freezer for a friend of mine who I bake for. And Passover brownies, which some of you might have seen the recipe for. When I lived here 40 years ago, I brought that recipe with me. I have no idea where it came from, but they're one of the best brownies of any I've ever tasted. And um, it was in the cookbook at Emmanuel, which is where I belonged when I lived here in my first life. And it somehow got into the Bethel recipe book several years ago. Someone found it for me. I said, I didn't even know it was in there. So it's a Passover brownie. And if anybody would like those two recipes, they're very, very easy to make. They freeze beautifully. I've got them both in the freezer now. Uh, and they're absolutely delicious. Uh, I'll be happy to email them to you or I can email them to Margaret. If you wanna just email Margaret, either way, I'll be happy to get those to you, but they're, they're terrific. I don't yeah. do too many cakes anymore. Cakes are a big royal pain. Most of them are way over dry. And I like the finger foods after a Seder. Everybody seems to enjoy just being able to pick up either the matzah, the, the caramel matzah or the uh, two different type of cookies. Yeah, Jan, if you want to send me those recipes, I'm happy to distribute to everybody who, who came yeah. today so that we all can, can leave. And I actually, I saw someone else just add to the chat that they have a Passover icebox cookie. Susan, feel free to send that to me also. I'm happy, if anyone has Passover recipes they want to share, I'm happy to, to email things out to folks who registered. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions for me on my recipes specifically, just email. Margaret can get you my email address. It's cookiemom88 at gmail.com. Oh, cookie maker, what can I say? Yeah, absolutely. And we've got some uh, some interesting comments that have come in. Graham crackers is an alternative base for the rest of the year for matzah. Have you ever done that before, Jan? That sounds I good. Know, but I've got a um, another recipe that I use for Passover that's used year round. It's called a pretzel salad. It's a jello mold, which sometimes jello isn't used during Passover, but you can use matzah, uh, crushed matzah instead of pretzel is the base. And it is absolutely extraordinary. So I use that for most faders in many, last many years. I'll send wow. that one to you too. I was gonna say, we might need that one also. And Karen, thank you for your tip too about using egg beaters. If anyone wants to use um, egg beaters for the uh, Kugel recipe, one cup of egg beaters equals around four eggs. So for the full Kugel recipe, that'd be perfect. For this next question, I might actually turn over to Natalie for a second because she said that she wants to explain how she makes the carrot Kugel, which I would love to hear what I've done differently um, and to hear from her, please, you know, the original uh, maker of the carrot Kugel. But Natalie, could you also answer for Louise? Can you freeze the kugel? I've frozen other kugels before, but, but let us know about this one. Okay. Well, first of all, my, it, the recipe is my mother-in-law's, and she gave it to me at least 50 years ago. And I was living in Austin, Texas at the time, and I was very active in their sisterhood, and we were having a Passover program. And I was with visiting my mother-in-law, and I said, do you have a recipe? And she gave me this. Everybody loved it, and since then, I always use it. I do, for, I do make it ahead of time. I cook it like about three fourths of the way through. I freeze it. And when I take it out before I'm gonna reheat it, reheat it I cut it into squares because it's cold and it will cut nice and smooth and easy. So that answers Louise Abrams question about could you freeze it? Yeah, and it does. And people love the kugel. And like last year, when we were just going to be the two of us with Seda, I made the two eight inch squares, but mostly I used the big nine by 13. The other thing is I didn't realize, I see that somebody said something about the graham crackers that you have to pass over. I didn't realize that there is a Passover graham crackers and I make a lemon tort for Passover. And what I've been using and what Joy Fleischer gave me the recipe is I've been using the Manischewitz plain mandel cuts. And then I 
do it in my um, do it in my food processor, and I make the crumbs that way. Mm. And this year, I was able to find the mandel cuts on Amazon. And then, oh, I want to say something else about the carrots. Yeah. Now, now I don't have to, you know, grate the carrots and do it. I could buy the bags of cut up carrots, and I, you know, and it's it, it's clean and everything. I just put it in my food processor and just process it. And I mean, that sure beats using a hand grater. <laughs> yeah, that's a great tip, Natalie. That's I probably should have bought the pre grated carrots. That's a really good tip. Uh, anything else you wanted to say on the carrot Google? No, no. Well, thank you so much. I'll let you. I'll let you leave the spotlight. But thank you so much for sharing with us today. It looks, it looks great. It's wonderful. Good. And we, I think we're oh, sorry. What was that? It looks delicious. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, we've got a question that actually maybe uh, somebody from Sisterhood can answer. Are the Shabbat candles dripless? This is just sort of a a quick question. They are. They're. Um, Yes, they are. I, I, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to answer the question, yes. Yes. Okay, great. And we've got two more um, great questions. One, I think this first one will be good for you, Jan, because it's about your cookies. Um, Barbara says, I would love the recipe from the brownies, Jan. Also, is your chocolate chip cookie still for sale in stores? I'd like to know that too, because no, I really no, enjoyed no, that. That's been many years ago. I just do them. I, I bake them. People occasionally ask me to bake them to sell. And then I just enjoy bringing them to special events. So I make money on the ones I sell, and then I take them and donate, and donate others to, uh, to other things. So nice. no, they're not in stores anymore. I was in a point when I was making them many years ago that I either had to set up a very large commercial kitchen or stop, and I just didn't want to do it, so I stopped. Great. I've got another a question from Shira that maybe I can speak to a little bit. Um, she asks, is there any coordination from Temple Bethel with Publix on Overton for better selection of kosher for Passover goods than we had last year? Um, the answer is that I'm not actually sure, Shira. If there is some sort of coordination, um, I don't, I'm, I'm not part of it or haven't heard of it, but it's a great idea. And I know certainly that it's challenging to find um, kosher for Passover products. In Birmingham, I often err to ordering things on the internet, which you know I'd rather go to Publix or something. Um, I will say though that we um, this would be a great chance to let you all know that we're going to be hosting um, a a virtual second night seder this year for those who who would like to join, and we will have an option for a Passover box drop off. You could also sign up for the drop off even without joining the seder um, if you're not comfortable using technology on that evening. Um, and that box will have some, you know, some wonderful kosher for Passover products in it. Um, my understanding is there will at least be matzah and everything you would need for a Seder plate. So that information should be up on the calendar this week to register. Um, and that would be a great way to get some of the Passover products um, Mark, you might be scrambling also, for. Something else about Passover products. I had actually called Bethany a couple of weeks ago and said, you know, I'm doing some Passover baking for somebody and he wants to make sure not only is everything Passover, but it's all kosher for Passover. I mean, I, I was using all kosher items. I don't have a kosher kitchen, but I was using all kosher ingredients, but he specifically wanted kosher for Passover. So I contacted Bethany and there is a list that's put out every year by some Jewish organization. Margaret, maybe you know the name of it. I can't remember. And she sent it to me. And it's a very, very lengthy list that every year they put this out of all the products that you can buy that are simply kosher. They don't have to have kosher for Passover. Right. They right. are kosher for Passover. And every item that I needed for the three items that I've told you about, the brownies, the, the um, crescent, um, pecan crescents, and this matzah, the, the um, caramel matzah, all three of them, everything that I used in them, all I had to do is get kosher items. They were all on that list. Yeah, do you, do you mind sending us that list? And I can include that in my follow-up email um, so, that, so that everyone can see it. Sounds like a great resource. I saved it on my desktop because I was so excited to have that. So yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I would like to say something. Um, Shira, I have been to both Publix, Montclair Road and Overton. I've been to both Winn-Dixie's, Shops on Montevallo and in Cahaba Heights. And I've been to both 
um, Piggly Wigglies. And Publix on Overton is expecting more Passover goods. And so is the Winn-Dixie in Cahaba Heights. Okay. But the two of them, I was able to, to really research and get a lot of stuff from one or the other. Plus, you also always have to go and look at their international foods, their kosher foods, mm -hmm. because they always have kosher for Passover stuff stuck in there that, that, that they're not even aware of. Right. And for me, it's usually more the, the refrigerated items that are the problem getting That's here. too early yet. The, the, yeah. The, but the, last year, nothing came in. Like, there was barely anything even for refrigerated. The, gotten the refrigerated I items last year was they always have the break stones, the butter. They have the sour cream. They have the cottage cheese. And they have the Tempty. But right. I had an order from Grillers Pride. I had an order the Par of Margarine. The Where did you order it from? Grillers Pride. Oh, Griller's Pride, yeah. He had that, and he had the chocolate chips, and he had the onion soup mix. Yeah, so maybe I'll just do a Griller's Pride order for Ripper yeah. Today's okay. the best day. Thank you so much, Natalie. I love the, the knowledge love that. sharing that's, that's going on here, and Karen had some tips in the chat. Also, does anybody else have any uh, questions or comments they want to make today, Passover recipes they want to share? It sounds like we'll have a lot for a follow-up email. I, I, I want... Oh, Natalie, I think you uh, might be muted. I'm supposed to say unmute. I think you're still muted. Uh, Margaret? Uh, yeah, Margaret. Uh, I just wanted to say, I think someone was saying it, but I'm not sure it came through, that um, Griller's Pride Passover orders are due today. So oh, thank you. share it if you're headed that way. Thank um, you. Today. Thank you. And happy Passover, everybody. I have to hang up to get to something else. But thank you. Happy Passover. This is great. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, thank you for the tip, Barbara. And yeah, I think if nobody else has any other questions, we can go ahead and, and let you all go enjoy the sunny day. And thank you, everybody, for sharing your Passover tips. Thank Anyone you. else has a Passover recipe to share, just email it to me and I'll send it out to the group. <laughs> Thank, thank you. For everything. Great thank you. Say a very big thank you to both thank of you for doing you. a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.